94 episodes. It's been 94 episodes since we last saw anything about Gilda. Honestly, it had been so long that having her in the show again was a genuine surprise. Not only that, we finally get to see the Griffin homelands along with some very interesting lore to go with it. Another instance of the cutie map, which is actually shaping up to be a very useful element for introducing new stories. And we haven't had an episode that focused exclusively on Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash since... Huh. Actually, the last time there was an episode that had these two in the starring role was, in fact, Griffin the Brush Off. How about that? Honestly, there was a lot to like about this story. Could have been better, but... Well, let's start from the beginning. The episode begins with Pinkie Pie being her usual random self alongside Gummy, whose blank stares once again make for a fantastic contrast to Pinkie's over-the-top excitable behavior. I was really hoping the episode would come to an end with another Gummy scene, and sure enough, it did. Thank you, writers, for not forgetting about that opening scene, by the way. Next, we get a rather fascinating look into Griffin lore which is adding a whole lot more world-building to MLP. Seriously, anytime the writers can continue to draw me in with more of these fantasy elements and give the fanfiction community so much more material to work with is certainly a plus. I couldn't wait to see what Pinky and Rainbow would come across when they arrived at Griffinstone. I wasn't really expecting a rundown village with a crumbling castle. I understand it was essential for the story, and it did help to drive home a good lesson at the end. But hearing all that fascinating lore, expecting a griffin nation filled with pride and wonder, it's kind of a downer that we weren't given a kingdom that lived up to expectations. It doesn't ruin the episode for me in any way, but it seems like such a missed opportunity to make the griffins into an intriguing culture that they could expand upon in future episodes. Still, we finally get some closure on the relationship between Rainbow Dash and Gilda. Fans have been speculating for years on what might happen if they were to meet up again, myself included. And given that we now know what Gilda's upbringing was like, this gives her a lot more of a reason for her actions in Griffin the Brush Off way back in Season 1. So yeah, I really like seeing the writers expanding upon elements they introduced early on in the show. Though, I have to admit, there really wasn't much to draw me in during the middle of this episode. We get a lot of Griffins acting selfish, Rainbow Dash assuming she can fix the problem all by herself, and Gilda just trying to give Pinky the brush off. And despite Pinky giving us a few more funny moments here and there, seriously, the comedy was really good throughout this story, all the drab and dull atmosphere was really taking away my initial enjoyment of this episode. I could already tell exactly what the writers were intending to do well before it actually happened, and I started wondering if there was going to be anything worthwhile left in this story. That is until... Cuteness Overload! I was not expecting them to include a flashback with so much adorableness attached to it. Not only are we shown how Rainbow and Gilda originally met, but it turns out that Gilda really is a little sensitive as I had originally thought we're shown that she really does have a bit of similarity to Fluttershy. Only that Gilda learned in her later years to fight back instead of drawing into herself. So once again, kudos to the writers for expanding upon the history of these characters while also giving the artists in the community a ton more possibilities for adorable artwork. I look forward to seeing what pops up on the Equestria Daily Draw Friend over the next week. Of course, the story was still rather predictable with Gilda coming to Rainbow's rescue, but the animators still managed to surprise me when they recreated a scene right out of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, so that's one way to take a cliché story element and make it interesting again. Though, I still can't shake the feeling that there was a lot of missed opportunity here. Not only with creating a richly detailed nation of griffins instead of the run-down ruin that it turned out to be, but also with some of the pacing and dialogue between Rainbow and Gilda. We all expected them to hold a grudge even after all this time, but there was so much more that could have been explored when it came to the resolution. Gilda's flashback was certainly a nice touch, and some of her conversations with Pinky worked pretty well. 
but I really wanted to see more of a genuine effort from Rainbow to make amends here. And having her suddenly just forget all of her grudge the moment Gilda came to the rescue felt a little too quick. It worked for the story, but it still seems that more time was needed to make everything flow a little more naturally. Though, to be honest, I should be focusing on what this episode is instead of what I want it to be. And for what it is, it worked rather nicely. The beginning was great, the ending was great, and the middle was... good. A most worthy entry for Season 5, and I must admit, I hope that we get to see more of Gilda and the Griffins in future episodes. But now I would like to hear from each of you. What were you expecting to see with our first look at the Griffin Nation? Do you think Gilda's reintroduction to the series was worthwhile? What sort of stories and artwork could you see coming out of this episode? Did you get a cuteness overload during that flashback scene? I would like to hear your thoughts on the lost treasure of Griffinstone, and here's hoping that we continue to see even more world building in future episodes. I am Dr. Wolf, and I look forward to hearing from you. Always carry plenty of bits. The Griffins are sure to help you as long as